Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing the market analysis for the month of August. Actually a reasonably quiet month as far as uh, market changes go. However, we did get a major content update recently and that is the Song of the Elves update. With it we saw a bunch of new items come into the game as well as have existing items change in price. So we're going to be looking at that as well as the price of bonds are extremely high now. They're going to be reaching an all-time high I would expect this year. And of course we're always going to be looking at trends as well as anything else that is interesting this month. I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get started. Okay so first up here let's look at some of the new Song of the Elves items. Uh, the most expensive one by far is the Blade of Saldor. And surprisingly not traded as much as I would have thought. I'm not sure if this has to do with the item's rarity or uh, the popularity of the content is not as high as something like Raids 2. So here's the daily traded amount for the Blade of Saldor. It's pretty low, especially now. Closer to the release of the content, we're getting around 10 to 20 traded a day. Over the last couple of days, not much. And because of the lack of supply, the item's price has actually gone up by a significant amount in the last week going from around 100 mil up to around 130 mil. And when the item was first released, it was sold for around 300 or 400 mil and crashed significantly in the first couple of days and seems to be bottoming out at around 100 to 150 mil. So we have another item here that is significantly higher in price than I would have thought. And I think that just has to do with the rarity and that is the Elven Signet. The only way to get this item is from catching a crystal impling and it is pretty rare at that. This item is still holding a significant value at around 10 mil each. And again, not many traded at all. Catching the crystal implants is a time consuming process and getting the elven signet from it is no guarantee and fairly rare at that. Another good example of these type of items is the Dragonstone set. Even rarer, the only way to get the Dragonstone set is from an enhanced crystal key and the only way to get those is actually to complete the Song of the Elves content, which makes it impossible to farm these quickly or to buy them from the Grand Exchange. For example, if someone wanted to open 1,000 enhanced crystal keys, they would have to go to Pryptinus, complete a bunch of the content there, and acquire a ton of crystal shards, which are untradeable, and you have to do that individually. And because of this, the Dragonstone plate body is still extremely expensive at around 12 to 15 mil, despite it only having the same stats as rune plate bodies. Another one of the new items is the enhanced crystal teleport seed. A very useful item, not just cosmetic or anything, but... Uh, the only way to get this item is from thieving uh, NPCs in Pervdinus. And once again, not many traded a day after the initial release. We're looking at around 20 to 25 at most. Okay, so next up here, let's have a look at some existing items that were affected by the Song of the Elves update. Uh, not a lot, but there were a few. Uh, first up here, pretty much any of the potions that had a divine version of it added. Let's just look at one of them here. Let's look at the Super Combat Potion. Uh, the price of it actually did go down a significant amount around the release of the Song of the Elves. It went from around 10k per potion down to around 9k per potion, which is a significant decrease for something as high volume as Super Combat Potions. Now let's have a look at the price difference between the two. So the Divine Super Combat Potion is worth currently around 17k, which means that upgrading it is worth around 9k each. Now because of that, you can actually calculate the value of Crystal Dust or Crystal Shards. If you use a Pestle and Mortar on a Crystal Shard, you will get 10 crystal dust, which is worth 2.5 potions, which means that the average value of one shard is around 20k or 21k right now, which isn't really that bad when you consider that if you harvest a crystal tree, you're guaranteed around 8 to 10 crystal shards, which means that at each time you harvest a crystal tree, you're getting almost 200k. That is really, really profitable. I mean, that does depend on you having the herb lore level to actually cash that in. But still pretty good. Um, now some of the other items that were affected in price were the Crystal Weapon Seed. That was actually an existing item uh, which used to just be called the Crystal Seed I believe. It was worth around 15k before the release of Song of the Elves and now it's worth actually around 6dk. So it has quadrupled in price as the new Crystal Bow is more useful. And you can trade in the Crystal Weapon Seed for Crystal Acorns which are used to grow the new Crystal Tree which is profitable like I just mentioned. Another item that was greatly affected in price was the Elf Camp Teleport, which is now called the Ironworth Camp Teleport. It used to be worth around 8 or 9k, shot up to 15k upon the release of the quest, and now is almost worthless at around 3k each. So it was significantly affected by the Song of the Elves. Okay, so that's it for the Song of the Elves update. Uh, there weren't too many other significant updates that had a tangible effect 
on items prices or at least an obvious one. Next up here I wanted to look at the price of bonds right now as I forgot to do it last month and they are getting extremely pricey. Okay so let's go back to the month graph here. We can see they're worth around 4.5 mil each which is very expensive nearly an all-time high right now and right now it's mid-August which means we're getting to the end of September where they normally will keep going up all the way until December. Let's pull the graph back a little bit further here. If we have a look at the last three months things are once again completely on the rise as of June and if we look back further we can see that the price of bonds are still going up significantly and without much deviation. Now the really interesting thing here is the amount of bonds traded is extremely low over the last couple of months. It does seem to be directly connected the amount of bonds traded and the general price of the bond. Now obviously with the release of mobile a lot more players were buying bonds but a peak of around 350k a day. Now if we look at the last couple of months we're looking at 28k bonds, 18k bonds, the amount of bonds bought and sold have been declining all year, but there seemed to have been a significant drop off around May. At the end of May, the amount of bonds really was cut in half, and it just has been going down since then. Now, my prediction for the price of bonds for the end of this year is going to be around 5.5 mil, which would be an all-time high. My reasoning for this is the prices of bonds generally goes up until December and there doesn't seem to be any significant updates or promotions in the future that would greatly affect the price of bonds. So I'm going to say that it's going to keep going up to maybe 5.5 mil or even 6 mil by the end of the year, which makes it not actually that terrible to actually just buy a bond and sell it right now. But on the other end of that, it's awful if you were trying to afford a bond just to upgrade your membership status. Now, one trend I've noticed a bit over the last couple of months is the price of herbs has been extremely low and it finally seems like we're getting a bit of a pushback for that. For example, the grimy snapdragons were worth around 7.7k or even as low as around 7k each all the way up until around July and now the price of snapdragons has been going up very significantly and quickly. We're already up to around 9k again. I think we're getting to that point again where things will most likely start going back up in price fairly soon and it has already begun on certain items. A very similar story for the grimy torso bottomed out in June at around 6.7k which is the lowest I remember seeing in quite a while and we're already back up to 7.5k. We have a look at Renars even more drastic at bottomed out at around 6k each and we're now back up to 7.6k and once again it really has a direct correlation with the supply here. Not as shocking at all but it is interesting to see. Now what's kind of interesting here is it does seem to have a very direct correlation with the supply of the item. A lot more traded back in October. The amount traded has been slowly declining. Although what's kind of interesting here is there doesn't seem to be much of an uptick in the amount traded. The price has just shot up for whatever reason. So I have looked at a few individual items but now let's look at the market indexes. They are a more general view of how a certain market is doing. First up here let's have a look at the general market index. I've looked at this a few times over the last couple of months but here's the general trend since it has been tracked. 100 points means that it is 100% average. Anything below 100 means that the price of items is lower than normal. Anything above 100 means it's higher than normal. While back in May we were closer to normal it does seem like the market is still declining a bit which is fairly typical of the summer but it seems like this year we got it a little bit worse. Another one I like to look at is the price of heavily bodied items, which does seem to be declining, but not too significantly. If we do look at the year view, it does show a fairly clear story. Pretty much since the start of the new year, the price of most items, but more clearly heavily bodied items have been going down in price from around 20 points above the index average down to well around 85 to 90 right now however just over the last couple of months it does look like things may have bottomed out and i would expect it to kind of shoot back up in september upwards to the new year once again one item i wanted to look at here quickly is the toxic blowpipe and you can really see the effect of not having a major pvm uh, update in quite a while going from around five mil a year ago down to around three mil today is a pretty significant decrease and once again we can see that directly correlated in the amount traded and again, seeing a pretty significant drop off around late May of the amount of these items traded. Let's have a look at the player counts around them because I don't remember a significant drop off. Actually, the player counts have gone up a little bit since then. I'm not sure why there seems to be a fairly large drop off at late May on GE Tracker, but it doesn't seem to really be reflected in the actual player counts. While we're at it, let's look at another interesting item that has been crashing in price, and that is the Amulet of Fury. Uh, going from around 2.7 mil or 2.8 mil back in July, down to 2.2 mil right now very cheap for a fury let's look at the year view of this that is a very significant drop off over the last couple of months 
Now, there's kind of a direct correlation here, and that is the price of Chaos Rune, so let's have a quick look at that as well. Okay, so we can actually see around the Song of the Elves update, the price of Chaos Runes went down from around 92 to 78. I'm not actually sure what part of the Song of the Elves would actually affect the price of Chaos Runes. However, it is directly linked to the Amulet of Fury, as you can trade in Chaos Runes for Tockle, uh, which then you can go ahead and buy an Onyx with, which then you can create a Fury with. It's all interconnected. That being said, that actually may be backwards because there is now ways to get Onyxes with the Song of the Elves update, which then could be linked to Chaos Runes, however I would more likely believe it's the other way. Interesting to look at, and the amount of Chaos Runes that traded per day has not actually changed much, so it has nothing to do with the supply of the Chaos Rune, and seems to be more external factors. So there are definitely some interesting market changes this month, however nothing too significant, and the Song of the Elves didn't really have as big an effect on the economy as some of the other updates, and I think that really has to do with all of the content kind of being self-contained. You really need to go and collect a lot of these items yourself as they are untradeable, and some of the larger pieces of content like the gauntlet doesn't require any items to go in. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave the video a like. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.